In this video, we are going to talk about how to use the console.readline method to get input from the user into our application. So here I have a just a little shell of an application ready to go. The console.readline method, the way it works is it pauses the console screen, waits for the user to type some values. When the user hits enter, those the characters that the user typed is stored in a string variable or a string value and that value is then returned. So let me talk about the how the readline method kind of functions here. The readline method takes no input arguments. So notice we don't put any type of values inside the parentheses when we use the readline method. The readline method simply pauses the screen and it gets ready to record user input. So our program doesn't have to provide any additional information inside those parentheses. All right, the, the readline method also always returns a string value. So no matter, even if, even if the, the user is typing in numbers like 1, 2, 3, the string representation of those numbers is what is being returned. Let's show a quick little example here. I'm going to type console.readline, and we'll just run this program. So this program only is going to call the readline method, and when we're done, we'll get to the right line and pause. So here's the application running. I have at the top of my console a little bl blinking cursor. Now this blinking cursor is the readline method executing. And the readline method is waiting for the user to type values. So here I'm going to type some values, A, B, C. I can type spaces. I can type numbers. I can hit backspace. So it's the readline method is fully giving um, keyboard control over to the user. So I will say e ABC123. Once I hit enter, that string of text ABC123 that I typed is then returned from the, the readline method into our application. Once we hit enter, the we go to the next line of code, which is our right line. We're print, pressing any, key, or we're printing the string. Press any key to exit, and then the second cursor pause is the con cursor pause is the console.read key method and it just waits for a single character to be pressed. Once I press a character, we have returned. Because the console.readline method always returns a value, if I want to use that value in my application, I have to store the result into a string variable. Remember, we cannot save data in our program unless we create a variable in which to hold it. So here, what, we, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable string variable called user input. After I declare the variable, I'm going to say user input is equal to console.readline. The console.readline method takes no values from our program and it, it is will return a string value which contains all the characters that the user typed. Now if this works, we should be able to print out the user input. So I will say console.writeline and we'll just print out, we'll make a formatted string. I will say you entered, and we'll put a placeholder here in which we will insert whatever value is stored in the user input variable. Okay, I am not assigning any literal values into the user input variable. It's going to take whatever console.readline gives it. So let's check this out. So I'm going to say, uh, so I have my blinking prompt here. That's the console.readline method executing, and it's waiting. This line 14 is waiting for the an enter key to be pressed so that the return value can be returned from the readline method and stored into our user input. So here I will type ABC space 123. When I hit enter, this string of text will be saved into the user input variable and then hopefully printed to printed back out to the console. And it is. So we see you entered the string ABC123. Now we have to be careful here, and we'll see in, a, in a, the next video on, on creating good prompts. Even if the user types in a number, 123, and it says you entered 123, I am 
saving the string representation one two three, not the number one two three. Okay, so if 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 uh, let's make a little note here that says if the characters one two and three are entered, the method returns the string value string one two three. It's a it's a string data type that is being returned. Okay. Now one final thing we will I we I will mention. Whenever you call the console.readline method, you should always have a variable on the left-hand side to store the result. The exception is sometimes you can call the readline method inside another method. So for example, uh, calling the readline method inside another method. Now we will go over the parse method in a future video, but I, I just want to show you an example. Int.parse console.readline. The int.parse method requires some type of string value to be passed into the parentheses. And the console.readline method returns a string value. So if I call a one method inside the parentheses of another method, the inner method has to finish its work first before I can execute the outer method. So in this case, the console.readline method will call, the user will type in some characters, when the user hits enter, that string of characters is then going to be returned into the parentheses of the next method, which will then operate on that input and so on. And this can go, you can nest um, method calls indefinitely. But we will see more examples on int.parse in a later video. One last point I, I want to make here. Notice that when I call console.readline as the one of the first actions of my program, when I run this program, the user sees just a blinking cursor. Now this is not good practice when creating an application. If the user just sees a blinking cursor with no other information around it, they have no idea what to enter. Is this a password? You know, is this, what is this? Is the program even working? So when we want to create true interaction between our program and the uh, user, we need to learn how to create something called a prompt which we will talk about in the next video.